Yo, what's going on, Epic7? I'm Sue, and this is my beginner's guide to Abyss Floor 111. Floor 111 will have you squaring off against Mui. The core mechanic of the fight is this move here, Lash. Attack Sammy with a whip with a 75% chance to inflict one random debuff for two turns, triggers a dual attack from a random ally. When the caster is not inflicted with Provoke or redirected Provoke on the caster's turn, uses Punishment instead of Lash. So as long as she's not Provoked or redirected Provoked, instead of using Lash on her turn, she will always use Punishment. Punishment is an AoE attack that gives two bleed stacks to your entire team and has a 50% chance to stun your entire team. It also does big damage because it penetrates defense. Now, as for the other passives and skills on the team, just so we're clear of what's going on, Grand Finale dispels all buffs from your team, gives an attack buff and defense buff to everyone on Mui's team, and respawns any adds if they happen to be dead, so we can't focus the adds. Additionally, she gives evasion buff to everyone on her team, and she is green, which means you don't want to play blue units into her, because if she ever dodges a blue attack, or you know you have a blinded character, or you miss on an evasion buff character, she is going to counter with Lash. That is essentially the entire mechanics of the fight. Now, if you come here into the actual hero screen, and filter by debuffs, and go to provoke, because we're looking for characters for provoke, in order to actually get around the mechanics, you'll notice that the characters are things like Amiki, who is blue, Assassin Kartuha, who is a ML4 star, Cecilia, who is a 5 star, and then you also have characters like Fallen Sisu, who is a Moonlight 5 star, right? The only free-to-play character that is RGB 3 star, which means everyone has access to her, and I say RGB 3 star because, well, Pillis would be excellent on this floor, but... There's a chance that you sitting at home, yes, you little Timmy, probably don't have Shadow Knight Pillis, the specialty change version of this character. It is entirely possible that you are new enough and haven't rolled enough of the Galaxy Summon to not have this character. So the only free-to-play guaranteed Provoke character that everyone will have is Falconer Cleary. And you would think Falconer Cleary would be great for this, but because of the nerfs to Falconer Cleary from years ago... Flurry attack is on a five turn cooldown. And if you go back here and out and uh, read our girl Mui and the rest of her passives here, you can see that uh, dispels provoke and redirect provoke at the end of someone's turn and becomes immune to provoke. Okay. So basically, it's an unreliable provoke. So there's no way for us to actually provoke Mui with free to play characters. And that is kind of the whole point of the beginner series is to only use three star RGBs connection heroes or expert hunt heroes i don't want to ever use anything that's not one of those things in this series because then my guy becomes not relatable to everyone watching it so instead i cooked up this really ingenious strategy using the team that you see here let's start by talking about adventurer raz so adventurer raz we've used him a lot here right in this abyss guide series and that is because of command strike here defense break Guaranteed dual attack with our highest attack character. But if you go under his skill trees, if you have it at plus 30, he gets this effect on Command Strike here. When using Command Strike, is a 100% chance to grant immunity to Raz and the ally on your team with the highest attack for two turns. So if you have his skill tree invested in, every time we Soul Burn Command Strike, he gets immunity. Therefore, he cannot be stunned. He cannot be hit by our bleed stacks, right? So now... As for how we build him, Arius here on the artifact, health percentage on the necklace, health percentage on the ring, and boots are going to be speed. Last thing to note on Adventure Raz before we move on, effectiveness is at 86% for me. You want 85% or higher. Starting from Abyss 111 onwards, the effect resistance of the bosses has increased. 60% no longer cuts it. You need to be at 85% or higher. Next up, let's talk about our main DPS. It's going to be Commander Lorena for me. Feel free to choose whichever single target DPS you want that is very hard hitting, very high attack scaling. So you could use like Navy Captain Landy if you have her. You could use, for example, Sarmia. Whatever you want, you could play here. But for me, Lorena is my girl. I'm going to be playing her probably till the end of this series unless I need Terran or Guard for whatever reason. Artifact here is going to be Daydream Joker. Critical hit damage here on the necklace. Attack percentage on the ring. Attack percentage on the boots. Try to have all your skills maxed out if you can. Obviously, you get the skill tree awakened if you can. That's all going to be great. Level 60, 6-star six awoken. Now, as for how Lorena dodges 
the stuns and the bleeds, it should be pretty obvious. Command Strike gives immunity to Raz and obviously Lorena. So as long as we soul burn with Raz every turn, Lorena is immune to the floor mechanics. Now, you'll notice I have two Soul Weavers here. Let's talk about Tamarin first, because it's the one you're probably most familiar with and you've used on every single floor if you've been following this guide series. Best Soul Weaver pretty much in all of Abyss. You'll notice if you look at the lower left here, my effect resistance is 166%. What you want to do is you want to go to manage equipment, set one of these sets to speed, and then the other to either health or resistance, whichever one you have more of. I uh, am on a free to play account that uses only dash pass adventure path gear, right? So for me, I never got free resistance gear, so I can't actually do that. So for me, it's going to be speed and health, and then I'm going to just sort by effect resistance. And I'm just going to go and just drop on as much effect resistance gear as I can with a ring that is on effect resistance, making sure that I have four pieces of speed set. So that, that way I still have some decent speed. You'll notice my tamarind is pretty squishy. That's fine. The goal is to get your effect resistance as high as possible. If you can get it over 200%, that's going to be awesome. Otherwise shoot for 150 or like 180. Somewhere in there is either 150, 180 or 200 based on your actual gear threshold. That's what you're going to need in order to clear this. Because Tamarin will have really high effect resistance, she is very unlikely to get hit by all of the different debuffs from Mui, and therefore she can kind of heal and cleanse our team unimpeded. Now, as for the actual gear here, I'm on speed boots, effect resistance ring, and health percentage as the necklace. My artifact is Shimadra Staff because it gives 20% ER to my entire team. If you have this, I recommend using it. If you don't have it, don't worry. You could still clear without it. Just use your Wanderer's Potion Vials or your Water's Origins or whatever have you on the character. Now, the last character that I'm going to be playing alongside of Tamarin is Angelic Montmorency, and that is for a couple of reasons. Number one, she has a boatload of cleanses in her entire kit with both Purification and Earnest Prayer. Earnest Prayer in particular is very good because it gives immunity for two turns to a character. So if for whatever reason we get hit with Grand Finale from Mui and our Raz or Lorena gets stripped, we could just earn his pair and protect them, and that's going to be super useful, right? On top of that, in her skill tree, if you look at her effects, if you have it maxed out, she gives a bunch of free ER to the team, which helps us out in making sure that we don't get stunned or bled, especially for Tamarin if your gear is not great. That's going to help out a ton. Make sure that you use an Ego Fragment here on her Imprint Concentration to unlock the effect resistance. That'll make gearing easier. And the way you gear is exactly the same as Tamarin, except we want Magaraha's Tome as our artifact. Health percentage here on the necklace. Yes, I know this is a hunt piece and is not actually free gear, but if you look at my subs, none of them are relevant outside of the base speed of four. So just use whatever health necklace you have. Effect resistance here on the ring and our boots are going to be speed. All right, now that you understand how we're playing the team and how we just are completely immune to the boss's mechanics, this should be a cakewalk. All right, so this first floor of my team is actually harder than the second floor, in my opinion, and that is because of this passive here, Lost Control. At the end of the fifth turn, the Simakwis gets Rampage on himself and all other allies. Once it has Rampage, you're probably dead within a couple of turns, right? Like maybe two turns tops. So you can't stall here. You have to rush the boss down. So I'm just going to YOLO a Command Strike at the start. No defense break, sadly. But that does protect us from the stuns here on Raz. We're going to S1 for the increased CR here. Go for the chip damage. Alright, you're going to use S3 here on Montmorency, whether characters need it or not, in order to get the souls and the better CR pushing. She's just there to be a battery for us. Now we go for the S3. That's one for the CR push. Better cycling. Fish for a duel. That's one. Alright, S3 again because it gives us the souls. That is on for it. S2. Fish for a duel. All right, we go for a dual attack here. Hopefully get defense break. All right, that's pretty bad. Try to leap one of these and don't get it. Okay, we're in pretty pretty bad spot. Roz is going to get like one more chance to defense break. If he doesn't, we're basically dead and we're going to have to restart. 
close your eyes. Go away. Standardized destruction. All right. Should we get started? So he's at the end of his fourth turn. So he's only got one more turn, and then we're just like dead. So we get the defense break finally. Big damage. We go get the actual souls here. S2 again. Fish for a dual attack. All right. Let's go S3 here for the souls. Because I need to go into the next floor with 10 souls, or I am absolutely Omega dead. Let's try and sleep an ad. So I said, we can take this one hit that we're about to take, but we don't, can't take too much more. Hmm. Go S1 here. A lot of damage coming, as you can see. We go hit this here. Go for the AoE heal. Still trying to hold on here. Lorena should be able to kill on her turn, so I'm not that worried about it. Like I said, that floor is a pain for us, but we're at least pretty stocked on souls here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to soul burn at the start. Even if you have the defense buff up, do not do that. You need to make sure you soul burn at the start in order to give Roz immunity and Lorena immunity because you're going to get stunned immediately otherwise. We can go S3 for the souls. Alright, let's go idle mode now. Let's go S3 for the healing on Roz. Right, we go S2 for the better cycling. Now let's go burn here. No defense break. Alright. Stun here on her. Alright, since this is already stunned, right, let's just go for this here. Even though we're probably going to get uh, hit with a counter for doing so. Lucky. No counter. Alright, so now we can give immunity here to Lorena. And get her out of stun. So let's go S3 for the souls. Alright, let's go Soul Burn here. There we go. Finally a defense break. Need the cycling here. Ooh, actually tag Tamarin. The ra the rare tag on Tamarin. Alright, now I have no abilities on Motmo, so the only thing we could do here is hit the eye. Burn here. All right, and now the next time we hit Mui, she's going to use Grand Finale. We have to be aware of that. So let's go S3 here, heal up. So let's go... Hmm. This is rough because if we... There's no real reason for us to Soul Burn because we're going to get hit with Grand Finale in a second anyway. It's going to just take away our immunity, so... I'm just going to S1 here because I already know Lorena's pushing. So that's going to remove all of your buffs no matter what. And now we have a couple of like interesting options here. We could soul burn this, but I don't really like that option. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to heal up Lorena because she's the mo person most likely to die from all of the damage that's about to be coming out. Because these things hit really hard. 
See? <laughs> Close your eyes. All right, we're going to have to probably soul burn this because I don't think that... Yeah, Montmo has nothing, so we have to soul burn this. That stun on Tamarin really messed us up. All right, so we have to S3 here. Badly. I risk our characters getting stunned. There's nothing I can do about it, though. That's just how RNG is. S3 for the souls. And again, we're just going to have to chance a, 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 a counter here because we have basically a 50-50 shot of hitting anything. At that point, just hit Mui. All right, let's do this. All right, I have to look at the CR bar. So Lorena's is not going to jump enough, so we can soul burn this. this won't be an easy fight. Let's fight together. All right, and then this will give us the idle mode that we were missing because we got stunned randomly. We can push to the front here. Hit here. We can heal up Lorena to full. This is going to push up Mui a bunch. Punishment again. Two here. Soul burn. Hopefully we get a defense break. That would be great. Got it. Alright, and then hopefully we strip all of these buffs here. Hit here. Heal up more. Lucky no no stun there on Roz. Blind on Roz, though, is kind of infuriating. Because again, now he's got that dodge chance, right? So we just risk the stun. Or I should say the counter. Takes the hit. Let's go S3 for souls. S2, and at this point, I think we're just on cruise control. We could go heal up Roz here. Still has blind. I'm still going to risk it. I'm just going to burn it to give immunity. So we're going to get countered unless that kills, but it does kill. And there you have it. Abyss for 111 in a nutshell. This one is just about managing the debuffs, right? And managing your immunity with Lorena and Roz. If you could do that, this shouldn't be too hard, right? Like, I think this team, I cleared it like three out of five times in the test run. So it's pretty consistent. Not 100% of the time. Hopefully, RNG is kind of in your favor. That first floor, though, that thing is really brutal uh, based on your RNG. Luckily, it's only like a 20 or 30 second loss of time. You can just reset. Things don't go your way. Any more questions? As always, let me know down in the comment section below. And post your clears so that other players can see what you're using, especially if you're using specific five stars. Because again, I do think specific five stars make this floor a lot easier than using my strategy. My strategy is just, again, circumventing game mechanics. Anyways, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you all in Abyss Floor 112. Later now.